Hello everyone. In this video you will see how to use HiSplit in order to create very detailed simulations of nuclear fallout inside the nuclear war simulator. What is HiSplit? HiSplit stands for Hybrid Single Particle Lagrangian Integrated Trajectory Model. The HiSplit model is widely used to calculate the dispersion of smoke, dust and radioactive materials. In the example that you see now, HiSplit is used to calculate the dispersion of cesium-137 emitted from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. There are two nuclear fallout models available in the nuclear war simulator. By default you use the VISIC-10 fallout model. It is a very fast but rather simple fallout model. It considers factors like weapon yield, wind direction and wind speed, but it doesn't consider other factors like the change of wind direction along the fallout path. It produces rather perfect deposition patterns that you see on the screen now. In order to use high split, you have to install it first. To do this, you have to go to the main menu, settings, high split, and here you can click on the i button. It will lead you to the website where you can download and install HiSplit. Ideally you install it at C HiSplit. If you have installed it somewhere else, you have to enter the pass here. To activate HiSplit, you go to Population tab, switch the Fallout model from VISIC-10 to HiSplit and click Apply. Now we can go back to our simulation for example, we can use the single explosion tool, create a couple of detonations, and run the calculation. Nuclear War Simulator will run high split automatically and run all the necessary configurations. It can take a couple of minutes to finish the high split simulation. After the calculation is done, you can visualize the fallout dose. And now you see that instead of the simple VZEC-10 patterns, you see the complex high-split fallout patterns. One of the most important settings for both fallout models is the date when you run the simulation. To change the date, you go to the main menu, to settings, population, and here you can click on the calendar icon and select the date. Let's say we just change the months to 9. We click Done. Now the nuclear war simulator will automatically download the weather data from the server and process it to a format that can be used in the nuclear war simulator. Now let's run the simulation again and you will see that the fallout is traveling in a completely different direction because the wind patterns have changed. If you want to use some other weather data compatible with high split, for example some weather data with high resolution, you can enter the file names manually in this window. By default the nuclear war simulator will run all the steps automatically. It will record the high split configuration for all the detonations that occurred, it will execute high split calculations and then it will calculate the fallout dose and create the visualization. In order to do it manually, you simply have to click on these three buttons. The first button will record all the high split configurations. It will record one high split project folder for each detonation that have occurred. This can be useful if you want to copy the data to a different machine with a good CPU and run the calculation there. The second button will execute the high split calculations and the third button will read the high split results and convert them to fallout textures that are used in the nuclear war simulator. There is a number of settings that you can adjust in your high split simulation. The most important one is the number of high split particles. By default it is set to 1000. This is a rather low number chosen to run very fast simulation by default. If you want to increase the accuracy of your simulation, you should increase this number to something like 100,000. This will of course increase the duration of your simulation. The other 
important number is the number of parallel threads. This will determine how many high split simulations are run in parallel. This should correspond roughly to the number of cores that you have on your CPU. There is also an option to add extra grid span. The nuclear war simulator will select a grid span automatically according to uh, the wind direction and wind speed, but if you find that this grid is chosen too conservatively, you can increase this grid span in order to include some low dose areas into the calculation. You can do it for each direction individually. There is also an option to choose the grid resolution manually, but you should set it to zero if you want to create high split configurations compatible with the nuclear war simulator. Then there is an option to merge all clouds to one high split project. This can be useful if you want to simulate an attack on a ICBM field and this should only be used if all the detonations are of the same yield and are in approximately the same area. This setting you can change the duration of your high split calculation. By default, it will consider only deposition within the first 24 hours, but you can also decrease it if you want to consider longer traveling particles. The other settings for high split are summarized in these two panels. It is the particle activity size distribution and dose and deposition. By default, the nuclear war simulator is using a log normal distribution. It divides the activity in 100 groups and distributes them according to the log normal distribution. By default, it is using the settings derived from observations at the Nevada test site, but you can change them if you want. After changing the settings, you have to click set and it will create a log normal distribution automatically. If you want to use something different from the log normal distribution, you can set the size groups manually inside the JSON file. And finally, you can change how the fallout cloud is created and how the deposition is calculated. The first number is the source normalization constant. It determines how much radioactivity is generated per kiloton. By default, it is set to 2350, which corresponds to a boosted plutonium weapon. If you want to have a very specific number, for example, for a, a uranium weapon, you can set it here. This number determines when the dose integration stops. Then we have three numbers for the high split model, determining the wet deposition and the particle density. There are two options to calculate the contours that you see on the map. One is the total integrated dose, which shows how much radiation the population on the ground will receive. It integrates the dose rate over this period from the deposition time, time point and the second option is the H plus 1 dose rate. This can be useful to uh, calculate how much radioactive material was deposited, not considering the activity decay. And finally we have an option to calculate the stabilized cloud. By default it is a gravitationally sorted model, which considers that smaller particles will rise higher and larger particles will stay lower to the ground. But there is also an option to create a more simple cloud model where you have a main cloud plus a stem. And if you choose this simpler model, then you can select the activity portion in the main, 
main cloud here. As you can see, there is a large number of settings that you can adjust. If you are not familiar with the high split model, you should limit yourself to the date of the calculation, to the number of particles, and to the number of parallel threads. And after you are done adjusting the settings, please don't forget to click apply in order to accept the changes.